Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over how to paint a mail merge letter. A mail merge letter is basically where you have a document that you merge um, with a database um, and you merge the fields from a database and the records from a database into a document. And what a mail merge does is it saves um, a lot of time when you're producing, especially letters for lots and lots of people. If you have a database with all of those people in it and you merge your letter up together with the database, then it just saves you a lot of time. You do not have to type in every record in every letter. Um, so it's there for convenience, really. Um, so in this question, we've been asked to prepare a mail merge letter using this file as our master. Okay. Now, a master is basically um, a document, that, that's a document that you're going to merge a database with. So our master document is this file here, and we've been asked to merge it with this file here, which is, this is a database, it's in Excel, but it still is a database. You can see up in the top row, we've got our field names, okay? And then we've got five records in there as well. So this is all the distributors for this particular company are in one database. Okay. Um, and we've been told that this is our source data as well. Okay, so it says, you will need to insert relevant fields from your data source, which is this file here, to replace the text in the master document, and the master document is this file. So to do this, we need to go into our master document, and we go to mailings, and then first thing we're gonna do is go to select recipients, and it will ask us to choose from three options. Now, if you've already got a database that you're merging with this, you go to use existing list. I'm pretty sure that's what you're gonna be asked to do in your exam. However, if you're asked to type a new list, you'd select that, and then you'd have to type out each record that you wanted to then um, merge with your letter. Um, but I don't think they're gonna get you to do that. So we're gonna to go to use existing list, and then it will give you the option to select your data source. So you've got to find the file, the CSV file that you're merging. Okay, and I've told you already mine's S16 distributors. Okay, and then what that does is that opens up other options now. So we can now um, merge our database with our letter easily. So we've been asked to merge the fields that we've got here. So these are the field names. They're not fields at the moment, it's just text showing us where the field should go. So I'm going to simply match up these fields in this letter with my database fields. And how you do that is you highlight the first field, go to insert merge field, and then find the same field. So first name would be merged there. Contact name, obviously, is contact name. Sometimes you may be asked to merge fields that where the names do not exactly match. And you might be asked to figure out you might be expected to figure out which field is supposed to go with which um, piece of text in the letter. Uh, but in this specimen exam, they didn't do that. They gave you the exact um, matching field names. So I'll just go ahead and merge all those fields together. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've merged all the fields. I found all the fields in my letter that I needed to merge with the database and I've gone ahead and merged them together. So if I go to highlight merge fields, I can see now the fields that I've actually known. So first name, contact name, address one, city, region, first name, and country here as well. So those are the ones merged. You must read the letter carefully or the document carefully to make sure you find all the fields that need to be merged. The next thing that we have to do is it says that we need to replace the date with the field to display today's date in a format, so in this format, okay? So we now need to do that. So I'll just go back to my letter and I'm going to highlight today's date. And if I just go to insert and then here's date and time. If I click on that, it has various date formats in here. So I need to match that with the uh, question paper. So this is actually a short date format. If you're asked to do a long date format, it would be this one. OK, but you've got to read the question carefully and it will tell you what format you should be using. So as, as you can see, long date is the longest one. But this is the one we've been asked to use. We've not been asked to have that date updating automatically, so we leave that as is. It's just going to put today's date in, so the, the date that you created the letter. So if I press OK, the date's now in there. I'm going to put the space back in. Try and keep the formatting as it was originally in the original document. Uh, and so we've done that. And it says, add your name as the originator of the letter. So in the directors, uh, in brackets where it says directors, so I'm just going to put name 
And then it says that you need to put in your centre number and candidate number as a reference for the letter. So I'll just go ahead and do that as well. So here's the reference section. So you would replace this with your candidate number and enter number as well. Okay, so that would go there. You put your actual details there. And then it says proofread and spell check the letter. Okay, so there's two things you need to do here. Proofreading is when you read the letter and you are now doing some kind of verification on the letter, making sure that there are no spelling errors that haven't been picked up just by the spell check. So the spell check doesn't pick up um, words that are correct but are in the wrong place, maybe. Correctly spelled but are in the wrong place. And punctua uh, punctuation and grammar as well you need to read the letter for. So I'm just going to have a look at mine. Um, and I'll run the spell check after I've proofread. Well, I can run it before by pressing F7 on the keyboard and that opens. So here's one word that's been spelled incorrectly. Check that it actually is incorrect. It could be that the regional dictionary languages don't pick up um, the spelling of certain words. So you've got to read the words and make sure that you're changing it to the correct thing. It tells me that my spell check is correct, but I still need to read my documents. So I'll just read through. Um, I've got a few uh, punctuation issues here. I need to put a full stop at the end of that sentence. I need to put a comma here. And I need to put a comma here also. Okay, so just make sure that you're checking the punctuation and grammar as well. So I think that's fine now. I'll just have a look again. So it says print your master document with the fields displayed. So. I'm just going to go back to mailings and untick highlight my fields because I don't want that in my evidence. And you'd go to print and print preview. So this is what you would print. I'm just going to take a snip of this because in the evidence it also has um, uh, a section for it. So you've got to look at your evidence carefully also because look, it's got master document with fields. So I'm just going to paste that in there. I'll just resize it because I want it to be huge. But I need to make it big enough so that the examiner can see. Um, yeah, I probably need to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, I think that's fine now. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to my letter. Uh, back to my question, sorry. It says, add a minimum of three features to the mail merge master document to suit a professional letter with reference to the house style specification sheet. So I need to look at my house style specification sheet. So here is my house style specification sheet. So basically, I'm going to pick up some styles from the specification, suitable ones. But I also need to read um, the information just underneath here as well. Um, so it says, it tells me that what the company does. And then it says, at the top of each sheet of its company letters, star cars must have their company name and a suitable logo to represent the company. When designing company documents, you may wish to add further enhancements to present a professional appearance for the company. Um, okay, so I've picked up two things that I could add, two features from the specification sheet that I can add to my letter. So I'm definitely going to add the company name and the logo. I think the title here I can use to format my company name because that is kind of like a title. And I think I'll use body text for the rest of the letter. So there's actually four features I've chosen. But I'm doing this because I just want to be on the safe side with regards to getting the marks here, even though it's only worth one mark. So what I'm going to do, just close my print preview, and I'm going to go ahead, ahead and add those in. Um, if I look at the evidence, it actually asks for um, evidence of the house style features that you've added to your document. So I'm just going to put in logo, and I will put in a screenshot of my logo there. Um, I'm going to put in company name. Um, with formatting. And I'm also going to put in uh, body text Oops. formatting as well. I think it is a good idea to label your evidence if it doesn't have a label, um, just so the examiner's got a really clear idea of what you, you're producing. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put my logo in. I'm just going to move all of this down. 
and to make space, I'm going to put my logo at the top here. So if I go to insert and I go to clip art, I'm just going to add in a star um, as my logo. Obviously, I need to choose something that looks kind of professional. I think I'll just use this one. Do not spend too long on this um, because basically, um, yeah, you just need to make sure you get the... Um, the features in as you need but don't spend ages creating a logo just find something suitable and then move on i'm just going to move the position of that over here okay and then i want to put my company name in okay now i've already created a title style when i did the house style specification at the beginning so i'll just format that as title style there okay and what i need to do is i'm just going to take a screen a snip of each of my evidence so i think i'm just going to snip my logo and uh, copy that into my evidence so i'll just put that there okay, that bit smaller. and i'm going to put in the show the company name with the formatting so if i click on modify and then if i just um oops in fact hold on let's highlight this and then go to modify Okay, so then you can see the actual text, the Atlas textile in there. So if I take, I'm going to snip this so they can actually see it on the letter, the text on the letter and the style as well. So I'll just copy that in to my evidence also. Oops. Okay, so I need to just do that and then go to my evidence. Put that in. Okay, so you can obviously just re- Oh, that's going to be too small. Okay, that's fine. And then I need to do the same for body text. So I will highlight my body text and then I will find body text, which I've put here. And if I just mod go to modify again, uh, okay, so that shows that I've um, put in the body text in. So I'll just snip that also. Uh, set the whole letter with this in there and copy that into my evidence oh okay i need to do this so press ok just select that as body text okay so that's formatted as body text now and then put that in my evidence really really do not worry about your evidence or any of your documents going over multiple pages and um, we've always been strict about this um in the past when you're doing internal exams but when it comes to your final exam don't concern yourself with that, okay? So if your um, evidence is going to several pages, so what, basically? It's fine, okay? It's your evidence, it's your exam, it's your right to be able to produce the evidence as you see fit. So I wouldn't concern yourself with that. I'm just going to close my clip art now. So I've now I've formatted my letter as I would like. So I've done that. I'm just going to go back down to my question. Okay, so now it tells me, so I've added the features, and um, now it says letters are only required for distributors in Spain and Germany. Um, so we need to merge letters only to those distributors and provide a screenshot of the evidence of the selection review. So if I go back to my document, I need to go into mailings and go to edit recipient list, and it opens this window. Now in here, there are only five records, so it would be easy for me to untick those distributors that are not in Germany and Spain, because that's what I've been asked to do. But if you have a data source that has loads of records in it, that is going to take you too much time and you need to find a quicker way of doing this. So you'll have to go to filter and it will open up this little window and then we can actually select the country and we're saying, so we want our country to be equal to Germany. So we want that all country again, equal to Spain, okay, so that will then only give us the recipients in those places, and I'm just going to use my snip again, just to snip out, yeah, just to show that I've used, that's my evidence for that, and I think I'm going to have to press OK before I do this, so if I just move this out of my way and press OK, Okay, so now it's only selected those that are in the country, countries that I've asked. If I press OK, that's done. So I can now put my evidence in for that. Okay, so there's my evidence for that. 
think I can make that a bit smaller so it fits on the page. Okay, there we go. Um, and then I'll go back to my question. Then it says, so I've done evidence five. Print the merged letters and make sure that you put these details on your merged letters. So if I go back to my document, my mail, okay, we're just going to now go to um, preview results. Okay, so here it is. So you can see now it's extracted the um, distributors from my data source and put it into my letter. Okay, so that's the first letter you print. And there's letter number two. So there's two letters you print here. Okay, and then you just go to print and then uh, print those out. Okay, so then you should all have the two in there. Uh, and that's it. That's it for mail match.